right so the last day of advent of code day 25 and we are very close to helping the elves save the christmas all that we have left to do is to help them get into the hot air balloons and fly off from the jungle like from the top of the mountain back to the north pole with uh, the fruits that we managed to find however as usual we are encountering a small issue this time um, we have a machine that's uh, able to uh, heat the fuel for the hot air balloons but the problem is that uh, it's uh, using a very weird number format it's basically like a base 5 but instead of having numbers from 0 to 4 it uses number from minus 2 to 2 so i mean yeah we if we go to the story we just have to call the support for uh, the machine and they explain us the same thing that we have to convert the numbers into base 5 and then back to uh, the normal format and they give us some examples to see how it works and for the first uh, question we will receive a list of uh, the amount in this uh, weird base 5 and we have to add all the numbers up and they tell us that in decimal the sum will be like almost 5000 but uh, the problem is that the machine also only has buttons for these types of digits so we have to convert the number back from decimal to this snafu that's what they call it format so yeah actually the answer will be like twos zeros ones minuses and equals symbols and yeah i mean basically this minus number represents minus one and this double minus symbol represents minus two and yeah i mean for the second part uh, there's really no second part it's just uh, usually for day 25 is just a single part so yeah basically this is what we have to do to add uh, these numbers together and yeah i mean the challenge will be just to convert to base 5 and then back from base 10 to base 5 so for the solution i implemented like a lot of helping methods the first one is converting from a snafu digit to a simple digit so just converting from two character that will be just two and uh, so on until minus two then we have this digit to snafu which basically does the reverse then here we convert an entire number to an i64 so we just have to take the string then uh, split it into characters then we map each character into a digit so we convert from the equal sign to a minus two or from a zero to a zero then we collect all these into a vec of numbers so basically we have a lot of i64s so what we have to do is to combine them together we go to this vec and what we have to do is to move in the reverse order because usually when you convert uh, from a from another base the right hand side will be the i think is the least significant bit so we have to go from right to left when we do the multiplications so then we can just use a fold and we'll start with the uh, number zero and the initial base which which will be one five uh, 25 then a five to the power of three and so on so we have to uh, get the previous number and add uh, the base times the digit to this number so this will be like uh, the first part of the accumulator and the second part of the accumulator will be multiplied by five each time so we increase the power of the five and at the end we just return the right hand side which will be the number and uh, then we have uh, to convert a number to a snafu so this was more interesting first we can just do the usual converting to a base so we modulo the number by five then we divide it by five until we have nothing left from the number and we can keep track of all the digits uh, but this will give us digits between zero and four so it's not between minus two and two and to get that format what we have to do is that for each uh, digit uh, the thing is that if one of the digits is uh, larger than or equal to 3 then we can subtract 5 from that digit and also we have to add 1 to the next digit this will just ensure that uh, we move 
from the 0 to 4 range to minus 2 and 2 range. It's basically the same thing but uh, we just offset the numbers by 5. And then because the last digit could be a number larger than 3, but I'm not sure if my input required this, but just in case some other inputs would, we have to check the last digit if it's greater or equal than 3. And if it is, we have to add another uh, 1 at the end and also subtract 5 from the last uh, digit. And then what we have to do is just to uh, again reverse the vec and then convert all digits to characters and then collect everything into a string. Then for the actual solution part, I just split the input into lines, then I converted everything into decimal numbers instead of snafu numbers, and then for the first part, like for the solution, I added all the numbers up and then converted the, the number into snap and yeah, that was the solution and yeah this was everything for uh, this year so we managed to come back with the uh, elves and we managed to gather some star fruits along the way so the uh, smoothie chef managed to prepare the smoothie for the uh, reindeers to help them uh, be able to have like magic powers to help Santa uh, to give the presents. I mean, I guess it's uh, when you click on the finish button, it's pretty much the same message like in each year. Uh, maybe this is the only different thing. It says that we managed to make the smoothie. And yeah, basically this means that we managed to save the Christmas in some way. And yeah, the, also on the calendar, it's, uh, I think it's funny how uh, these hot air balloons move around so yeah this was this year's advent of code hope you enjoyed it as much as i did and yeah i mean if you want to cheat and get the solutions for all the problems you can solve them using my source code on github and yeah i tried to make it work on all types of inputs so hopefully it works on everything not only mine but yeah i mean you should also try to get it working by yourself i mean you can copy it if you are stuck but uh, yeah, it's nice to get it to understand the understand what the problem asks. So yeah, I also really enjoyed to learn Rust. I think it's a pretty good language. I really like this type of uh, iterators stuff, like uh, using maps and filters and folds. I think it's uh, it uh, makes you think a bit, and it's not as easy as using uh, for loops, but uh, it's like uh, doing some puzzles, which is pretty fun. And yeah, I also think that uh, somehow for some reason, it, uh, Rust makes you think a bit about uh, hoping useless uh, memory. Like it makes you kind of want to not use clone that much. Okay, I'm, I'm trying really hard to just use references. I'm not sure if I did it the best way, but I mean, compared to something like Python where you just uh, copy everything from uh, one function to another and create a lot of objects and uh, hope that the memory, like the garbage collector, does its job. Uh, in Rust, it's more complicated. You have to think like, for each variable if you really need to copy it or not. But yeah, I mean, like for a uh, doing algorithms i think python would have been easier like for this type of challenge um but yeah i mean it's still fun to try something new and yeah, i think that for advent of code it's like the perfect uh, chance to do it so i mean i don't know i think that uh, there were some guys using excel and <laughs> this type of stuff i think that's uh, that's really cool but going for something more simple like coding and just is uh, yeah, simpler so yeah, if you want, you can check out all the all the days in my GitHub and see you guys next time. Bye bye.